Well, Tom, here it is, my bathroom. Oh, yeah. It's pretty typical for a Cape Cod-style house like you have. Well, what's the problem? Well, it's this floor. If we get down and take a look, it's a vinyl tile floor. It's not one whole sheet of vinyl. It's a peel and stick 12 by 12 tiles. Mm -hmm. And there's yep. some discoloration. There's some cracks in it. And, of course, with 12 by 12 tiles, there's seams You're right. that are already coming apart at the joints. And if we come down toward the bathtub, it's even a larger seam where it's already starting to peel up from water damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't want water getting under there. So what do you want to do? I'd like to put down a ceramic tile floor with, with grout so that lasts a lot longer. Sure. But, you know, even though this is a small bathroom, that's a pretty big job. We have to remove the fixtures. We have to remove the trim. We have to modify the casing around the door. Mm -hmm. We have to peel up the old tile, install a new subfloor, and install the tile. Now, I think I can get all that done today, but I won't have enough time to grout it. If I leave you with that much, can you grout the tile? If I can get a new tile floor today, that'd be great. I'll, I'll grout it myself. Thank all you. All right, let's get started. That wasn't so bad. Not so bad. Let's see how this floor comes up. Up easy. Hey, let me show you what we have here. Okay. We actually have a toilet flange that's in good shape. Lots of times when you take a toilet out in these older houses, you find a cast iron flange that's busted and you have to deal with it. This is in good shape. It's connected to a PVC pipe. The problem is, is when they put this new subfloor down, they cut the hole for the flange way too big. Look at the space here. That's not good. No, and there's nothing underneath any of the screw holes to attach the toilet to, so this toilet can move around a lot. That's not good. So what I've done is I've actually cut a patch out of pieces of wood the same thickness as the subfloor. And I'm going to slide it underneath the flange. So to do that, I have to cut out a piece of the old subfloor so this will sit flush with the top of it. I'm going to trace around the perimeter, and I'm going to cut it with my saw. See if our piece fits. We'll slide it under here on this side. There's that one. And we get this one. There we go. Wow, look at that perfect fit. Yeah, now all we have to do is screw it down. And I'm also going to screw off the rest of the subfloor, about every 8 to 12 inches, so that can't move. Now I want to cover this plywood subfloor right here with this cement board. Now this is a quarter of an inch thick. It's a great underlayment for tile. Let's see the tile that you chose. There you go. Oh, I like it. It's pretty classic black and white tile. It's going to look great. All right, now rather than cut the tile around all of this trim work, what I want to do is I want to cut the piece of trim off underneath so I can slide the cement board and the tile under it. To do that, I'm going to use an oscillating saw. And I'm going to use this scrap piece of cement board and a piece of tile to set my height.
All right, now to make long straight cuts in cement board, you score it and snap it just like you do drywall. The only difference is the knife that you use. You can't use a utility knife because it will go dull real fast. This is a carbide tip knife and it will stay sharp for a long time. Put it on my marks. Just run it down my straight edge. Okay, now let's drag it over the end. Let's snap it down. Okay, good. Now I got to cut right here. Okay, good. All right. Now, there's just enough play in this PVC pipe below the floor here that I can pick the flange up just enough to get a couple of fillers under it. And that way I can slide the cement board right under it. Now to hold the cement board down, I'm going to use this thin set. All right, now I'm going to spread this around with my trowel. And the trowel is actually a V-notch trowel. So I'll spread it around first with the flat edge. And then I'll switch it over to the notch side. This little piece in here. I'm using inch and a quarter cement board screws about eight inches apart. Now before we actually set the tile in the thin set, I like to dry fit them first to see how the tiles lay out in the room. Now we've laid them out across the tub nice and straight. I've also taken a measurement and it's a nice perpendicular line down here so we have a nice square angle. I also looked at the, right over here, we have a full tile on this side of the room. We have to cut the little black pieces for there. Over here on this side of the room, we end up with a full little black tile, and all we have to do is cut some small pieces of white to fill in there. A wet saw is great for making clean, straight cuts. And if you move the tile side to side, you can even cut a notch. I've applied this fiberglass mesh tape over all of the joints of the cement board and now I'm ready to start installing the tile. I'm going to use the same thin set and the same V-notch trowel. What do you think, Matt? Tom, I love it. It looks incredible and it completely brightens up the bathroom. Makes a big difference. Yeah. Now tomorrow, after the thin set is dry, I want you to take this pre-mixed grout and work it into all the joints with this float. And then wipe it clean with a sponge and some water. Mm -hmm. 